Hi YouTube, and this is JTrain997, and I'm back this time with my review of the G.I. Joe Retaliation G.I. Joe Trooper figure. Now, as you can see here, um, this is one of the figures from the initial Wave 1 that did come with a variant. Um, it's variant, as you can see, where this is the, um, I guess technically it's the standard, although I've seen a lot of both of these versions, uh, a lot of both of these guys in stores. Um, he has the blue kind of gas mask steel, and even though you can't see his cape, his cape is also blue. Over here, it's more of a brown or tan, uh, brown or tan, if you will. So, he comes with my favorite action um, action feature of all, which is none. Instead, he just comes with extra gear. Um, well, at least he was planned like this, I believe. Um, he is carried over from one of the figures from the Pursuit of Cobra line. Was going to be released in a later wave. At least that was what Joe Con would have me to believe from this year. But a lot of great looking gear, loving the look of that backpack. On the back here you can see all his various action poses. And his reader says, The G.I. Joe Trooper is armed for action with enough weapons to win any battle. With his mask and survival cloak, he can withstand the most brutal battle conditions on Earth. So, fantastic looking figures, let's open them up. So I'll go ahead and say, hands down, this is probably the best G.I. Joe army builder we've ever gotten. Now, granted, there are a few issues, but hands down, this is just phenomenal. Um, not to say that everything's perfect, but here you can get a quick look at um, all of the different ways you can pose him. Um, we'll get on to more in a bit, but here are the obviously the big variation, the blue and tan. His helmet is on his backpack. Um, the way I have the rifles back there, I'm not quite sure if that's correct, but they fit and it's weapon storage, so oh well. So we're going to put these two guys off to the side here, and we're going to have a better look at the G.I. Joe Trooper. Now... My one big gripe with this figure, which we'll go ahead and get out of the way because I really do love this guy, is that with a lot of the retaliation figures, you're hearing a lot of collectors complain that, oh, and by the way, as a side note, I always make sure I no mention them, they don't come with bases, that's another big gripe, but oh well, you got to make peace with that, that the plastic in the retaliation line feels cheaper than it has been before. Well, I've been through a couple of figures, and this is the first one where I can honestly say, yeah, it's cheaper than it was before. Two out of the three troopers I've got, this leg is, and only this knee, the double jointed knee, is so horribly flimsy that you can't even get imposed on one leg. He always leans all the way back. This one, no problem. This one, not so much. Um, two out of three, that's got to be, you know, an error with the plastic, with the way it was treated, something. So that's unfortunate, but let's actually get him back on his borrowed base here. At least for a moment. I had to peg him down on both. Like I said, he won't stay completely up. Or you know what? We'll just go into the backpack. Um, another mention about the quality of the plastic. This peg does not stay rigid, which makes it very hard to get it plugged into his back, especially when trying to put the cape on it. But as you can see here, very nice. I thought the majority of these pistols would be sculpted in, but they are all removable, including the spade. Um, as you can see, they're kind of easy to knock the lower ones out. You get two of these. Of course, as I said, I'm not quite sure if I have these on right, but they fit, and I like that. The mask, which I actually like that it is actually a mask. It's not just an alternate head sculpt. The um, other helmet is an alternate head sculpt, so it can't be actually put up here. Um, two of these, which are right here. And once again, I, as I said, the spade comes off. Very nice. Um, I'm definitely loving how much gear he got. You know, could it have used a little more paint? Yeah, but... You know, that's something you grudgingly make peace with as a G.I. Joe collector. Um, same kind of deal with the vest. I think that overall, because there's a lot of really nice detail there, it really could have stood to get a little more paint. Oh, also, he's got his double knife sh knife sheath over here, both of which, once again, removable. Very nice. Although, um, to be fair, that does get a little um in the way if you want to put the cloak on. So you kind of got to watch that. You'll end up knocking it off a lot. Now... Just a beautiful looking figure. Um, I've heard a lot of people refer to this guy as the um, Master Chief G.I. Joe fig. Mainly because of the helmet and the green. Which I, I'll admit, there's a similarity, but, you know, he's a G.I. Joe guy. Easily, you know. Still, just... I don't know what happened with this knee joint on these figures, but there's definitely an issue. Now, as far as articulation, of course, head is on a ball joint. Has the full range of movement, up, down, left, and right. Arms, also, likewise, ball joint. Out and spin, 360. Bend and spin at the elbow. Spin at the wrist. And I believe, yep, hinged as well. 
We do have a tiny bit of hindrance in um, moving his torso, mainly because of his vest. It can be removed if you want to. Legs, of course, forward, back, and out. Double jointed. Once again, that knee is kind of weird. And have a very nice and very well hidden ankle pivot, which you gotta love. Which is so, just full articulation. It's fantastic. So while they said in the beginning that only ninjas would get the full articulation, this guy, like I said, I believe he was from the um, Pursuit line, he just never saw production until Retaliation, has all the full articulation you love and want in a G.I. Joe figure. So beautiful sculpt, beautiful accessories. Um, there is obviously an issue with the plastic, but um, we've been getting a lot of good G.I. Joe Army Builder figures. I mean, with the Rise of Cobra line, we got the, um, the Pit Trooper. I wasn't crazy about him, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad figure, but it wasn't my favorite one. So, this is definitely a guy, um, retaliation is out there, you know, pretty well, but it's going to go away. I don't know if Wave 1 will come back out. Let's actually get him back up here. Oh, I'll show you the helmet and cape trick real quick. Of course, you got to pop that off. Where's the... Ah, oh, where's your head sculpt? Of course, I don't have one. I need it. I'll show you on this guy. Of course, this guy, his helmet's already off. Just slide the helmet on. And you can see the way the actual cloak goes up and over, which is here. Um, it does kind of hinder articulation once it's on, but it's for looks, obviously. Um, and once again, the problem with the tab makes it kind of an issue. With that being said, let's go on to a final thoughts on this figure. So, this figure is running you 10 bucks a pop. I am. It's going to be very hard to say no to this guy. Do I think ten dollars is too much for a single GI Joe figure? Yes, I absolutely do. But this is one of the best army figure army builders we've had in a long time. I love the Steel Brigade. I thought the Pit Trooper was kind of a blah figure. This guy is a must own multiples for any GI Joe fan. Um, you know, I do have some issues. I wish they would have come with a base. You know, these two guys, their knee joints are giving me a lot of trouble. But I'll, you know, there's ways to stiffen up the knee joints. Fantastic backpack, loving all the weapon storage, all the extra gear that's removable. So once again, probably my favorite figure to come out of the Retaliation Wave 1 line. And that being said, this is JTrain997, and I'll see you soon, YouTube.